So, a little bit of problems with the shipped eggs. Uh, more of them came up with air cell issues. I just candled them. Okay. I got turkey eggs. I put the turkey eggs and the chicken eggs together. This is the incubator that turns the best. Those eggs are all the large fowl cochin eggs that are good. Um, none of the Jubilee Orpington eggs were good enough to go in here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine with perfectly good air cells. So everybody else has air cell problems. So I'm going to try this thing. I'm going to try to save them. I've never tried this before. Um, if you can go or on YouTube, if you search uh, detached air cell, save detached air cell, you'll find videos. Um, I'm going to have to hand manipulate these. Um, some of these were turning for two days, almost two days <laughs> tonight. So I discovered them and I pulled them out and now they're stabilized in these holders completely upright. One person said start turning them. Um, one person left them completely alone for seven days. I think I'll go in three times a day. They're completely upright right now. I think I'll go in three times a day and just spin them like a quarter turn. Just spin them but not lean them any direction. Um, at least for seven days. And then um, I'll candle them and make a decision at that point what way we want to go with them. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I've got nineteen eggs in here with the air cell issues. So we're going to see what, how well we do. I've never tried this before. So I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on this, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it the good old, old, good old college try. We'll see. Can't hurt. Might help. Anyway, later. So um, we're just going to check in on the eggs. It's been 24 hours since I discovered, well, not 24. It's the next morning around lunch. Um, since I discovered, you know, the extra eggs with the problem air cells. So this is what I figured out. I'll pop this up. Let me see. Temperature. 99.8. We can live with that. I check temperature because I don't, you know, have to be anywhere. I'm checking temperature on these eggs once an hour. At least. This one, which is the turkey eggs and the good chicken eggs, 99.4. Uh, for some reason, this one, when it changes, it tends to want to go down. And this one wants to go up. And I'm, you know, because these are shipped eggs and they've already been through a crap ton, um, I'm trying to treat them very gently. I'm trying to keep the temperature and the humidity extremely perfect, you know, to do the best I can with these eggs. So anyway, let's look at what I finally ended up doing. There's the eggs. I've got them just rolled paper towel, stabilized. They're um, exactly upright, so all these air cells can be at the very top. This morning when I woke up, I just spun them. And not fast, just very gently, very slowly spun them about a quarter turn in place. And then about two hours later, these cartons, I just gently rotated the cartons around. So the eggs that were close to the light are now farther away. So next turn, I'm going to do just a, a slow quarter spin on all the eggs. And two hours after that, I'm going to just the whole carton without removing the eggs, you know, without disturbing much of anything, I'm just going to rotate the whole carton around. So that will provide some movement to the eggs. Also, it'll help with even warming of the eggs. 
and the turner is no longer in there. Um, I took the turner out because the eggs have to sit, you know, the cartons have to sit on the turner and it's not the most ideal situation. And I don't need the turner. These aren't being turned, you know, automatically. So I took the turner out, which gives a more flat, solid surface to put these cartons on. Um, here's the turners right here. Um, this, this one also, um, it doesn't turn well, so it's better for a hatcher. I'm going to keep these as long as they'll work uh, to be hatchers. Keep my incubating incubators cleaner. So that that's the other turner up here is this one as well. And then these guys, these are just normal. Just doing their normal thing right there. Um, that little boxy thing. That was a thermometer, or a, yeah, thermometer, hygrometer I got at Walmart. It didn't last very long. But you see that little stick poking out? Um, that's just a piece of tape holding it to the back. There is a clip on the back. Let me see. Ugh. Let me put, put you guys down, and I'll show you what I did. I'm not going to move with that one. I don't even... The, the problem is I don't even want to mess. So we'll pull this one. Okay. Let me get it. Okay. See, it, it didn't last very long. But on the back is this little stick thing. And this little clip, um, I hook it over the egg turner thing, the little bar of the egg turner. So it doesn't tip over, um, it, it doesn't, you know, move very much. I put it right in the middle. Um, I put the little probe end underneath this clip so it's kind of shaded and kind of protected. And then it goes up to that. That is a very accurate thermometer. I'm very happy with those. Here, let me put this back and we'll continue to talk. I'm anal obsessive about my temperature, so this is going to set the temperature reading off. I just won't mess with it for an hour. Anyway, that is an extremely um, accurate thermometer right there. And then if you look, I'll show you. I love that thermometer. I've had these for 10 years. Well, more like eight. And I've had, I had three of them. One of them, the, the display went down finally. Um, so I had to get rid of it. But these two, I bought them all the same year. And that one and this one, they're doing really good. So anyway, and in the back, you'll see I've got a hygrometer back there and a regular bulb thermometer. Um, I'm obsessive. And I think with eggs, it's a good thing to be obsessive. So I've got that bulb thermometer back there. So if I question the readings I'm getting, I just look right back there to see what, you know, what we're reading at. And then the round one is a hygrometer for a reptile cage. It's got little slots, little openings in the back. I threaded um, yarn through. And... And I hand sewed these, these covers for the incubators. They are filled with batting like, like a quilt. I made these, um, lots of them. So I just tuck the yarn. There's um, a string, a shoelace in a casing here. So I can tighten them down really tight on the barrel and also down here so they wrap around a little bit underneath and tighten so i just put the yarn for the hygrometer and the bulb thermometer i just tuck it underneath this band here this tightened shoelace and it holds it in place <clears throat> and i have the same setup um, doom, doom, doom. right there same setup for this one so it's just a way of double checking <laughs> what I've got going on. Um, 
these are old. I'm realizing this incubator isn't turning really well. So that's why it's for the eggs it is. I'm going to have to get a new incubator. I just, that's the only one and it's lightly struggling. So I'm going to have to get a new one probably next month. Because um, I plan to do several batches of eggs this summer. I got to have, you know, properly working equipment if I'm going to do it right. I'm not going to spend all that money on hatching eggs and then not have the proper equipment. Um, also, these two thermometers are the only ones I have. So if I get another incubator, I'm going to now have four with two working, two turning and working. So I'm going to end up having to get a couple more of these thermometers. Um, the hygrometers are easy to get. They're not very expensive. Um, that little, the little bulb thermometer, they don't make them like that anymore. Just plain. I wanted just like that. A couple more just like that. Can't find them. They all have butterflies or sunflowers or stupid stuff. You know, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I like the construction of the thermometer. It's very solid. Um, so I may end up having to go with butterflies or sunflowers or something stupid. I may. Um, oh, I can't open this one. This one also has the thermometer and the hygrometer. So anyway, that's what's going on. It is tonight. Tonight. It's lunch right now, but tonight will be day three on the chicken eggs, the turkey eggs, they're halfway gone. They are halfway gone. So not too long we're gonna have turkeys, but those aren't the important ones. We've got, the eggs came from our birds out back. I'm not worried about those. It's the chicken eggs that are the primary issue and concern and getting them to hatch. Every last one possible. Cause you know, you don't know how many you're gonna lose. I suspect in this one, with the air cell problems, I candled them yesterday. One of them looked really pale for being a fertilized egg. Really pale. Um, I look for changes in the yolk and the al albumin in the egg. When it's too young for the, I call them the spiders. When it's too young for the spiders to show. I look for changes in the fluids inside the egg to kind of help clue me in as to whether it's it's changing internally, which would mean it's it's fertile and it's growing. One of these eggs was very clear; there wasn't any changes at all. So I'm I'm wondering if it isn't going to be a dud, a non-fertile egg, or the germ cell got killed or whatever. So anyway. That's what I'm doing. We'll just I'm gonna keep a running commentary um, until they hatch or don't hatch or what might be the case. Um, at four days, I will incubate the sound eggs, the, the good ones. Um, at four days, I'll incub or I'll sorry, I'll candle them to see what we have going on. Um, so that's another two days. These. I've been told to leave them until seven days. Um, uh, so maybe, I'm going to try. It's, it's hard. I want to look. But I'm going to try to leave these for seven days before I candle them. And then I'm going to try to candle them where they sit without taking them out, if I can. Um, and then we'll make decisions about what needs to happen. So anyway... That's it for today.